Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Before the video begins, I want to apologize for the sweat. I had to crack the door in my shop today because it's kind of windy outside and you know what wind does to audio. Uh, when I crack the door in the summertime in here, it's over 100 degrees, so if you can deal with the sweat, I can deal with making this video. As you saw from the title, this video is going to be about a battery load tester. I got this particular load tester at Harbor Freight. I've seen them around at Walmart, Advanced Auto, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, definitely online. This one at Harbor Freight was cheaper and they all look exactly the same, so I imagine they're all the same. I can't prove that, but I imagine they are. They just put a different brand and a little sticker on there. Another reason I got it at Harbor Freight is because, like I said, it was cheaper. They have a pretty good track record of having decent tools, especially for the money. And if I have any problems with this thing, they usually don't give me any kind of issues, you know giving me my money back and doing an exchange, etc. So that's why I chose this one. I never thought that I would need a load tester because I've always used digital multimeters. If you don't know what this is, you can use it to test like voltage, current, capacitance, resistance. Depending on how much money you want to spend, you can test a lot of other things. So I recently ran across a situation to where I would need the load tester. I'll explain why I've never needed the load tester first, and then I'll get into the situation that I did need it. The reason I've never needed a load tester is because everything that I've ever had only had one battery. This is my truck, UTV tractor, etc. The way my mind works is if it hasn't been used in a while and it doesn't start, the battery just needs to be charged. If I try to charge it, or if I do charge it and it says it's fully charged and it doesn't start, then the battery's bad, right? Okay, so that was, you know, and then I can use the meter to just check the voltage and say, well, the voltage is good, but it's not starting. That means the battery's bad. Well, the situation I ran into was my in-laws bought a second-hand battery-powered golf cart. It had six six-volt batteries in it, and the charger was saying it was fully charged. The fuel gauge on it, which just looks at the voltage, says it was fully charged. Um, my meter says it was fully charged. My meter said all of the individual batteries were fully charged. But when you apply power, the battery went to zero. Well, not completely to zero, but it went low enough to where the controller wouldn't allow the golf cart to move. So that let me know that there was probably an issue with the batteries or a dead short somewhere, but nothing was getting hot, nothing was popping, so I would start with the power source, right? And the only right way to really do that, like, it's kind of dangerous to use the meter in that situation because you have to apply load to it while somehow checking the individual batteries. And obviously the power was dipping out because the fuel gauge was dropping and going all over the place. So that let me know I needed to test the individual batteries because it's probably just one of those went bad. Um, and the only way that I could really safely do that is with the load tester. Now, as I said before, the voltage was good and each individual battery was good. But with this, I could actually test each individual battery with a load. So you can hook these to positive and negative to the battery it and I didn't realize that this even had all this stuff I thought it was just a load that said good or bad I never really paid attention to them if that makes sense but this has a voltage gauge on it that it applies a hundred amp load when you flip this switch and we'll go over I have some batteries charged I'll kind of show you the operation of it in a second but just kind of explain everything beforehand when you hook the battery to it the voltage jumps up it goes from 0 to 16 volts so you can test you know 6 to 12 volt battery with it is what this one's rated for when you flip the switch, 100 amp goes through the or pull, is pulled from the battery, and then the voltage drops. And this tells you if the battery is good or bad or weak or in between. Another cool thing about this that I did not know about is you can test your starter with it, and you can also test the alternator with it. Now I know if you've got one battery with my meter, you can test the uh, the alternator. The voltage obviously climbs when you start your vehicle, and you can test if it's bad by if the voltage drops below a certain threshold but with this you can test something with multiple batteries by testing each individual battery which i thought was really cool and like i said i didn't know that it had this gauge and everything on it so that's very interesting as well this first battery that i'm showing you is a battery that i suspect is bad i've never tested it before this is the first time i've used this on this particular battery the reason i have this battery is i took it out of my wife's car a few months ago I did fully charge it, but the reason I removed it from her car is because the auto start stop stopped working in it. The car was still start. It was kind of weak, you could tell. I don't know if you've ever heard like a weak starter before or a weak start, but this was definitely causing that. Put a new battery in, starts fine now. Start stop is working okay now. So I'm curious to see what this tells me 
about the uh, state of the battery. This is an 800 cold cranking at battery. There's a thousand and eight hundred right there. So if this battery is bad or weak, that 800 should be in yellow. I, I wouldn't assume it's going to go to bad because it's still holding the voltage. That's the voltage right there. It's around 12.4. I fully charged it and it's been sitting you know, overnight. So maybe it's 227 right now. Maybe a full day it's sat. So the instructions say to test it for 5 to 10 seconds. So we'll test it between 5 and 10 seconds and see where this gauge goes. You'll hear it click and that's when the test will begin. So you saw the gauge was at the highest end of weak and the lowest end of good. So it's not bad bad yet, but it was getting there. I definitely, the way this thing was acting, I definitely didn't want to leave it in the car and didn't feel that it was reliable, especially if we went somewhere, you know, and we're kind of stranded because of a battery. It was worth it to me to put the new battery in there, but it's also worth it for me to keep this because I can use it for things like this or a winch or my dump trailer if the battery goes dead. I have another deep cycle starting battery. We'll test it. it. It's about to be fully charged. It hasn't had time to set, but it's going to be fully charged in probably the next hour or so. I'll go ahead and take it off and we'll test it and see what it says on the gauge. This battery is only about a year old. It's 860 cold cranking amps. I didn't let it fully charge. You're supposed to test these fully charged, but I think this will kind of get the point across. Uh, the charger said it was 88 or 89 percent charged, so it should be good enough. Already, you can see the voltage is higher than the other one was fully charged, so it's going to make some difference. Let's see what happens with this one. This is a starting deep cycle battery. I use this for winches, and I got in this battery box to connect random different things to it. But like I said, newer battery, not a hundred percent state of charge and 860 cold cranking amps. Let's do it for about 10 seconds and see what happens. That's interesting that the voltage drop more on this battery, this newer battery that I know is in good shape versus the other one. I wonder if it's because these are connected to these terminals. I'm going to take this lid off and connect it directly to the battery and see if that makes a difference because it might just be the voltage drop, but we'll see. Okay, I have it connected directly to the terminal, the battery terminals now, and it's not going through these wires into that. So let's see if that makes a difference because that probably would, especially with a high amount of current. Yeah, that made a good bit of difference because this battery is not fully charged and it still did better than the other one. And you could see how much of a difference it made going from these terminals directly to the battery. And there's only like not even a foot of wire. And I have really heavy gauge wire going to those. So you just have to keep in mind things like that when you're testing batteries and when you're dealing with a lot of current. And I'm not sure if you can see there's actually smoke coming off of this thing. Uh, the duty cycle you want to keep in mind remember it offhand but let's go pull up the manual and I'll show you the duty cycle and then I'll explain what that means too in case you don't know. So I have the duty cycle right there. I hope you can see it. 10 seconds per test with a one minute cooldown and three tests in five minutes. So I'm, I was right there at it. I did three tests in five minutes before it got really hot and started smoking. I imagine that's what the cooldown's for in case you you know if you repeatedly do that you're probably going to burn that thing up. And you're going to alter the resistance of that resistor in there. So that's one thing to keep in mind as well when you're doing these things is to limit the amount of time to what it says it's safe for. And make sure you have it connected directly to the battery because you saw how much of a difference that made. I'm kind of glad that happened. So that's, you know, give you an idea of something else you could look for when you're trying to do tests and check readings and things like that. I hope that was a decent explanation on what to look for. When you're trying to test a battery um, 
the first battery was questionable, obviously. It was still kind of in the green, but it was on the weak end of it. Uh, the second battery I tested obviously was good. Like I said, it wasn't fully charged and it was still better than that one was. And it was similar cold cranking apps. And as you saw, the clamp placement makes a huge difference. You want to get it as close to the battery terminals as possible. I'm glad that happened because you know, that kind of stresses the, the amount of voltage drop you can have in just a short amount of wire with a high load. So, and I forgot to mention too, this is a six volt and 12 volt. So it has a six volt range and that's your green, yellow, and red there and your 12 volt range. Well, actually, that's your 12 volt range with your green, yellow, and red there. And that is your alternator. Uh, I'm not going to start something up and test that because I can kind of explain that. That's where I was getting that earlier when I was saying I always use a voltage meter for stuff like this. Because with a voltage meter, and that's essentially what you have here is a voltage meter. You hook your battery or hook this to your battery and you're going to be somewhere in the 12 volt range as you saw before when the battery was just sitting there with no load. When you start it, your voltage is going to drop and then when your engine gets running, your alternator is going to pick your voltage up ideally in the okay range right there if it's in the red that's bad if it's in the red that's bad you're overcharging that's going to destroy your battery that's going to destroy your battery as well and if your battery can't keep up with everything you're going to have a dead battery and going to need to get a new one of those as well as a charger so if your battery ever dies it probably would be good to clamp this on there just to make sure once you put a new battery on that your starter is maintaining the voltage there so something else to look for like I said, this helped a lot when I had multiple batteries. I wouldn't need this so much if I've only got a single battery. But now that I have it, I'm going to be able to use it. I hope you guys got something from this video. Um, for the price, I would de definitely recommend having one of these around. I don't really see anything that could go wrong with it unless you... I was about to say drop it, but I think if you dropped it a couple times, it probably wouldn't hurt it. You'd really have to do something to tear this thing up. I think it would last a lot of time. So if you have the space for it in a drawer or on a shelf in your shop, I would definitely recommend having it around because it'd be nice to know sometimes if, uh, especially if you get a new battery, you know, new batteries are expensive and for $20, test your charging system alone, that's worth it. But it can also be nice to just have around to test a battery if you think it's going bad. And if it's not going bad, then you can pinpoint, you know, if it's your charging system or something else going wrong. $20, I think it's a good buy. Had I not had the opportunity to use this, in my mind, like I said before, I thought this was just something that applied a load and said good or bad. I didn't realize it had the, uh, the gauge on it and a way to test your starter and alternator. I definitely recommend it. I'm definitely glad I purchased it. So I hope you guys got something from it. Um, if you have any recommendations, anything, any other kind of questions you'd like to know about the thing, ask me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you have any suggestions for new videos, let me know. Stay tuned because I'm going to start making more videos again. Hopefully, I'm going to stay into it this time. So, stay tuned. Comment, like, subscribe. Suggestions. I'll see you guys in the next one.